this whole team contributed to this win tonight in so many ways that uh, I couldn't be more proud of all of them. The Rohawks are once again Class 3A state champions in big board sports. Universal City Randolph left no doubt that they were the best girls team on the track last night at the UIL State Class 3A Track and Field Championships in Austin. Head and shoulders above everyone else, sophomore Taylor Nunez. After going 4 for 4 last year as a freshman, she did it again with the same event scheduled this year. She anchored the 4 by a 100 meter relay to gold with an incredible leg, struck gold in the 100 meter dash in state record fashion, demolished the field in the 200 meter dash, and even won the long jump again. Now just two years into her high school career, Nunez is an eight-time state champ. Did last year's performance help her prepare for this year's competition, though? It really didn't, honestly, because, you know, I thought that was last year. This is this year. Everybody gets better. I get better. You know, you never know who comes out here, and I'm not sneaking up on anyone anymore. You know, everybody does know who I am. Nunez's sophomore teammate Sophia Bendet played a crucial role in helping the Rohawks claim the title. She opened with a win in the 800 meter run, then stayed patient and used a great kick to win the 1600 meter run. Now she's coming home as a two time state champ. It's crazy. I still am in shock, honestly. I was not expecting that. My goal today was just to come out and do the best I could, you know, top three, you know, because I still have two more years and I'm just, I'm so excited to see what the future brings. In Class 4A competition, Kennedy senior treasure Valerie ended her high school track career by battling her way onto the podium, finishing second overall in the 400 meter run with a time of 57.34 seconds. Did she expect that result? No, I just, I, don't know, I just ran. <laughs> yeah, I started like picking it up by like 200 meter dash. I started like, I, I felt myself running faster. I feel like I, I like made my school be on top because we were always like the underdogs. We like never had a name for ourselves, so I wanted to do it for my school, for my mom and everybody. In the field events, Comal Canyon Lakes, Alencia Lentz defended her state title in the pole vault, matching her state record height of 13 feet 6 inches to claim gold. Now she's won four state championships across two states, Virginia and Texas. What will she aim for in the months before heading off to college? A PR, first of all. Uh, just working on certain forms and stuff. My plant definitely need to get a better plant and meet some. It's getting better in practice, but i got to move it to the meet. And then um, just working on form, and there's always stuff to learn in pole vault, so just continuing to get better through that. Here's a look at some results from this morning's Class 5A competition. Smithson Valley's Alyssa Jones finished second overall in the long jump with a best of 19 feet, 3 and a half inches. Alamo Heights senior Leo Bowen is bringing home silver in the pole vault, last clearing the bar at 15 feet, 6 inches. And in the wheelchair division, Stevens senior Alicia Mears took second with a best toss of 17 feet, 7 and 3 quarters inches. Track events are currently underway. We'll have those results for you tonight on the Night Beat. San Antonio FC continues their road trip this weekend in Charleston with a chance to win back-to-back -back games for the first time in over a month. They'll have the It's going to be a good trip again in Charleston and a good, good team. Focus on ourselves first and I think the, the, the team is getting way like, better after like week after week. I'm just excited, excited for, to compete against this guy. Charleston is currently the best team in the Eastern Conference. Kickoff is scheduled for 6.30 p.m. tomorrow. Should be a great match. We'll see who comes out on top. Right. Thank you, Andrew. You got it. Our KSAT Q&A is up next. The weekend is just about here. It's a big one. We're celebrating mom and mom figures. And yes, we have a little bit of rain to contend with. But if you are making or tweaking plans, we got the KSAT Q&A for you. We have Stephanie Guetta, who is joining us on this Friday, local influencer extraordinaire, whose handle we like to say rhymes with Puro Flinche, because we can't say the full name that never gets old. <laughs> Stephanie, thank you so much for being here. I'm glad to be back, Myra. Yeah, I know Especially it's been a minute. I know, it's been I, we're Fiesta, pre-Fiesta. That's right. I can't remember that. Those yeah. are the timelines that I reference. <laughs> Before and after Fiesta. Yes. All right, moms this weekend. There are so many events happening. You're highlighting two with moms focused. Yes, um, and happy early Mother's oh, Day to, to you, you as well. and my mom and all the moms out there. So there's two awesome markets going on tomorrow. So in case you're a last minute shopper, you can mm. still go out and get your some, something for your mom that is a little more personal or handmade. There's a Mother's Day market at SoFlo, which is on South Flores, and that is a free market to attend, free parking. They always have tons of vendors, um, and that is a really great place to shop handmade, local, and it's oh, curated and awesome. themed. So this will be their last one until the fall. Um, so make sure you get out there and attend and bye, bye, bye.
<laughs> um, and then the second one is Mother's Day Market at Felice Modern, which is a very mm -hmm. cute shop. Um, they always do really fun pop-ups, so they have the Mother's Day Market tomorrow also. Um, and that one you can buy from the curated things they have in the store, but they also have vendors outside. They're in Almost Park, another great place to shop. Um, I just love all the things they do. They had a Hot Cheetos Market yes. recently. They have a Pedro Pascal one coming up soon. <laughs> uh, very, very, very fun market to attend um, whenever they have pop-ups at Feliz Modern. Yeah, they always have good finds there. Both places, good places to buy, you know, local, yes. find unique stuff. Yes. Right? Okay, so the next event, not necessarily mom-focused, but this is Sounds on the River, which in my mind, would not sound like it comes with a DJ. Which is something unique and cool. So um, tomorrow night at Confluence Park, um, which we've talked about before, it's a beautiful yes, space right on the river on the south side. There is, they're bringing, the San Antonio River Foundation is bringing Mark Farina, which is a global DJ. I actually am a huge fan of him myself. Plus, local DJs, JJ Lopez, Ken, Ernest Gonzalez, Lando, and Trinity, which it's just gonna be a great night for music and dancing as long as the weather allows us to. <laughs> Confluence Park looks beautiful at night. There's usually always like neon lights when they have an event. Mm -hmm. I've seen really cool nighttime yoga events there. Um, and it's a family friendly event. So yeah. another great way uh, if you can celebrate your mom, if she loves dance music, house music, you wanna get out there and enjoy just being out there with everyone together. That is a really great event to attend tomorrow. And it's great that we can keep bringing global DJs here to San Antonio and celebrate them in a unique place like Confluence Park. Or introduce mom to yes. house music. <laughs> hey mom, happy Mother's Day. Yeah. This is what house music she is. She probably heard Beyonce <laughs> do it and now you gotta hear like the other end of it, which is the DJs and they're amazing. Yes, okay, so <laughs> the next event that you're highlighting, Pueblos del Maiz 2023, what's this all about? So um, San Antonio is a UNESCO city of gastronomy and this weekend they are celebrating corn. They're celebrating maiz. So they're actually having an event tonight at the Pearl. It's going on now, if anybody's out and about. But tomorrow at Casa Hernan in Southtown, owned by Chef Johnny Hernandez. There's different food, cocktails, desserts. You'll learn all about the history of corn and how it's been celebrated in all kinds of cultures, and especially how it came about to be so integrated integrated into Mexican American culture, Mexican culture. Um, and Casa Hernan is beautiful, mm -hmm. great place to take in some cocktails and botanas, but tomorrow it's gonna be a really special thing because it is part of the UNESCO City of Gastronomy, and so all eyes are on San Antonio for this event. Yeah, and now somebody <laughs> out there is singing that TikTok famous corn <laughs> song. I know, someone is doing it. I'm not gonna sing it, but I do love that song. <laughs> <laughs> You're an influencer, you would have to know that. Okay, so this is another one for mom. Tori Poole headlining the Mother's Day comedy show. Yes, yeah, so Tori Poole is actually a local San Antonian comedian. We actually saw her recently um, at the Laugh Out Loud open for a big headlining comedian, Chris Estrada, who's on this show called This Fool on Hulu. She's funny, she's amazing, she's a mom herself. She has lots of funny jokes about being a mom, being single, dating in San Antonio. She's headlining her own show this Sunday at the Laugh Out Loud. It's going mm -hmm. to be a really, really fun time. So if your mom loves comedy or you are a mom, ask for this for your Mother's Day gift. Or if you just want some laughs and you're not celebrating Mother's Day, <laughs> it's also gonna be a really fun time. So she's got a couple of people opening for her, but it's a big deal to see San Antonians headlining our biggest comedy club in town. Yeah, absolutely. That's really cool that it's somebody local and who can make jokes about motherhood because, <laughs> I mean, we have to. We need them. Yeah, yes, we do. Uh, Centro San Antonio, state of downtown. That sounds interesting. Yeah, I wanted to make sure to talk about this event. It's next Tuesday at the SB, which is our brand new venue in downtown San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Centro is uh, normally has an annual meeting, discussion about the state of downtown, where the future of downtown is going. Um, the welcoming remarks will be by our newly reelected mayor, Ron Nuremberg, and we're focusing about we're focusing on building downtown and what it looks like for everybody to be safe, accessible, and also vibrant and a really great place to hang out, to live, to work, to play. Um, and I think it's very important that all of us are a part of that conversation. So um, if you're a member, there's a discounted ticket with Centro. If not, I believe it's $35 to attend. 
Um, but there is food and drink included too, and you get to see the SB. But I do think that it's a really, really important time for us to be talking about what we want downtown to look like and shape it for years to come for us and then for our kiddos. Yeah, because it is changing <laughs> every single day. So fast. I'm ready for the construction to be done, um, but yes, we're going to get yeah. there. <laughs> yes, yes, slowly but surely. What are your Mother's Day plans? I'm going to hang out with my family, uh, weather permitting. If we have the weather, <laughs> the weather gods um, letting us do that. Um, I do have my grandma still, thankfully, um, my mom, all my tias, and my husband's mom, my mother-in-law that we're going to celebrate with on Sunday. But um, I hope you get to enjoy time with your yes, family and your sure kiddos, will. too. Yes, I sure will. Time with family, that's honestly the best way to do it. <laughs> we're blessed to be able to do that. And I know our weather guy over there, he has said there's going to be breaks in the rain. It's not, you know, don't be canceling too many plans. Yeah. We'll hear from him in just a second. Awesome. Stephanie, thank you so much. Thank for you, Myra. Your time. Always great to so see you. So glad to be back. Happy yeah. Mother's Day to everybody <laughs> out there. We'll be right back. As new restrictions take effect along the U.S. border with Mexico for migrants seeking asylum, a Chicago community is stepping up to help migrants who've already arrived in their area. Noel Brennan has more. A once empty warehouse in Pilsen now overflows with activity. It's a full house today. And goodwill. The haircuts from Mark Nava are free. Like I had a little extra time on my hands. And I feel like it would have been the best way to spend it today. And on the other side of the building, all the food is donated to migrant families who've moved in. Sí, más cómodo. Jorge Luis, his wife, and their three kids spent eight days living inside a Chicago police station. Ya dormimos que sean colchones, ya que se nos han dado ropa. Now, they feel the extra support of an air mattress Mejor. and the Pilsen community. Most of the migrants here moved out of the 12th District Police Station. We got babies as young as three months old, 23 kids and uh, over 70 people right now. Alderman Byron Sicho Lopez of the 25th Ward helped organize volunteers we could not just sit and watch. who turned a warehouse into an emergency shelter. We we can provide some shelter until, of course, the city of Chicago, the state and federal government bring support and resources to have better conditions, again, not only for migrants and refugees, but for Chicagoans across the city. The alderman sees this shelter as a model for other wards. We do need to make sure that we identify areas, especially in the Latino community, uh, where we can set up similar uh, shelters in empty public schools, empty churches uh, that can provide humanitarian help. A crowded room is still far from perfect, but it beats the floor of a police station. Hay lucha para bañarnos. Este, tenemos una tranquilidad. Estamos más tranquilos y más seguros. As this empty warehouse fills, even the barber cutting hair knows the need will only grow. So far, we're two down and probably uh, 15 more to go. No, muchas gracias, mucho gusto. Yeah. Back here at home, let's take a look outside with live cam. Adam Kasky watching these storms out to our west develop. And Adam, there's a new warning out that way. Yeah, we have a new severe thunderstorm warning, which does include Del Rio, Brackettville, and some locations of northern Maverick County just north of Eagle Pass. There's a look at that. And we'll get, of course, a closer zoomed in look and then time this out for communities that are downstream that are going to be getting this. It's starting to move pretty quickly off to the northeast. So we'll time this out for you. And of course, when these storms should get to San Antonio in just a bit. You've heard us talk about the potential for flooding this weekend. It's the timing, Adam, though, of what's out to the west right now that you're watching closely at the moment. Yeah, and we do have some severe thunderstorms off to the west, and then we'll have off and on showers and storms through the weekend. As for this evening, your plans in San Antonio, Bear County, surrounding counties, it's fine. Just give it several more hours, and our rain chances and storm chances really jump. Take a look at the graphic there. You see through 8 o'clock, a 20% chance around here for a stray pop-up. It's unlikely that anything's going to pop up before the main batch of thunderstorms gets here from the west, and that's going to be closer to midnight. So we start to boost those storm chances to 60% at 11 p.m., 70% midnight, and then 80% thereafter, and then even on into your early Saturday morning, 80%. So quiet around San Antonio at the moment. What we're watching is this cluster that's coming together out west in Mexico along the Rio Grande as well. A lot of lightning with this. That's all the white 
lines that you see. I mean, this is very electrified. We can even turn on the lightning counter. Look at that over 2000 strikes within this frame here over the past 15 minutes. That's pretty impressive. We haven't seen that kind of light show in a while around here. Anyway, that's that. So this is the severe part of the storm. I'm going to turn off the lightning because it can be distracting. This red area that's bowing out this is the severe part of the thunderstorm that could have winds up to 70 miles per hour within there. So that's all headed off to the northeast pretty quickly at about 35 miles per hour. So we can time that out just that section of the storm for a few folks that are going to be downstream from it. I'm going to be a little generous there with that timing and just so you get good warning. All right, so Spofford at 7.07 p.m. Brackettville, same time. Uh, Almo Village at 7.15. Lost Creek Place at 7.46. That's outside the warning area, but assuming it makes it to Lost Creek Place and stays on track, it'd be at 7.46. So that's what we have off to the west right now. Within there, there could be some maybe one inch hail, but the wind threat is the primary danger at the moment with that cluster. Here's the big picture, and we need to talk about this because this is going to be a trend for a few days, not necessarily as much severe storms, but rain and the pattern. We've got this disturbance that's digging into northern Mexico right now. See this trough that axis there through Mexico? That's thrown energy our way and it's being blocked by this upper level high over Louisiana. In turn, this is going to be parked there and it's like a big lineman in the NFL protecting a quarterback and it's just saying, no, you're not getting this way. Uh, uh. So we're going to continue to have energy spewed our way and thrown our way in more showers and thunderstorms in the days ahead. Here's our future cast for just this evening and tonight. 10 o'clock storm still west of San Antonio. The leading edge will probably be the strongest part of this cluster and that should make it to San Antonio around midnight. And we'll, of course, be updating that timeline in the coming hours. We'll be live on air and especially on the KSAT Weather Authority app as needed uh, covering this. And then even into tomorrow morning, more development behind that main line with some pockets of heavy rainfall, which is why flash flooding definitely poses a risk, not just tonight, but flash flooding through the weekend and even into Monday. As for tonight, we do have that high risk of flash flooding, but also the moderate risk of wind gusts 60 to 70 miles per hour and then slightly less risk of the large hail. We do think the hail threat is more so west of San Antonio than say around town, but it's one of those things in this kind of pattern, you just can't totally rule it out. So it's still 80% chance in the morning and through the noon hour, widespread showers and storms tomorrow. Then in the afternoon and evening, I think the storms will become less numerous. We're not going to see quite as many of them. 77 the high temperature and same story for Mother's Day. There will be breaks in the rain throughout the weekend, but you can anticipate some showers and storms coming and going and overall an active and damp pattern uh, with some heavy rain at times. 77 the high on Mother's Day. We get into Monday. Guess what? We do it all over again. Widespread rain likely. I mean, we're talking a good three to five inches by Monday night with locally higher amounts and notice with that blocking pattern, even scattered activity through Wednesday. Yeah, lots to watch. Thank you, Adam. We'll be right back. Could you be paid if your flight is delayed? That's the idea pitched by the Biden administration. Mandatory compensation if a flight delay or cancellation is the airline's fault. Mike Valerio breaks down what it all means. What do passengers deserve if delays turn disastrous? Passengers like Pam Shelby left heartbroken after the 2022 holiday travel meltdown. Because I wanted to visit my family. But there's nothing I can do about it. New this week, President Joe Biden proposing a federal rule change that would compensate passengers for delays and cancellations caused by the airlines. It could take effect by the end of this year. But already in the European Union, passengers can receive up to $663 for significant delays. One study found that the European Union required airlines to compensate passengers for flight delays. The number of flight delays went down. Right now, 10 U.S.-based carriers cover the cost of meals for passengers and nine cover the cost of hotels if delays or cancellations are caused by the airlines. But they do so voluntarily and can stop at any time. 
Brian Summers, founder and editor of the Airline Observer, says Biden's proposal could be stronger. He didn't necessarily say you'd get a cash payment as you do in the European Union. You could get a travel credit or even frequent flyer miles. Mary Schiavo, a former U.S. Department of Transportation Inspector General, says this signals a reversal of airline deregulation, which ushered in an era of misery. Remember, the taxpayers of the United States own the airways. We own the runways. We own the airports. The airlines do not own those. We need to re-regulate in a grand scale with a coherent and intelligent United States transportation policy. In Los Angeles, I'm Mike Valerio. All right, so now we've got another severe thunderstorm warning. This is for basically the rest of Val Verde County and now creeping into Southwestern Edwards County. Yes, Rock Springs, this is not far from you. I know Rock Springs, you're not in the warned zone, but you can expect this cluster to make it to you by 8, 8 p.m. is when you can expect that cluster to make it to Rock Springs. As for Lakey, I'd say closer to about 8.55 p.m. And we'll be tracking this on the KSAT Weather Authority app and even uh, on air as needed as well as this moves towards us. Check back in on the night beat. We'll have the very latest and we'll keep you updated here uh, from the KSAT 12 Weather Center. Right now, the severe weather west of San Antonio should make it to town around midnight.